Well, good morning, guy. You're spring. Man, that that wasn't bad for the the first time. Uh, I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you a warning here. One, I move around a lot, so cameraman, I'm sorry uh, in advance. Uh, and I come prepared to preach two sermons. <laughs> just two, just two. One, if there is some participation and we get some amens, I have three points. If I don't, I have 72. <laughs> so it is, it is up to you how long we are here today. Brothers, hey, look at there. Hey, come on. Come on in the room, Lord. Hey, Amen. I want to tell you, it is an honor today to stand before you as a son of our Heavenly Father, as the husband of the lovely and beautiful Tamika, the Father to Dion, Jared, Jordan, and Queen, and Princess Bella, and to be a man. Look at there. We're going to get this thing rolling. And it's extremely humbling to, to be chosen by God to stand before you today and to also be one that the Lord so moved on your hearts to be a partner with in the gospel I don't know if anyone has told you this, but church planting is extremely hard. Uh, I wouldn't wish church planting on my worst enemy. It is, it is grueling, it is taxing, it is, it is difficult, it is frustrating, but it's, it's beautiful and it's, and it's glorious. And the only way that we are able to survive is through the support of faithful brothers and sisters such as yourself. So, uh, I will speak on behalf of my wife and to Purpose Church, and I want to say thank you for your faithfulness. I want to say thank you for your support. I want to say thank you for your love, and I want to say thank you for your prayers. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying this to, to make you feel good about yourselves. I'm saying it because it is, it is truth. It is reality. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord placing us on your heart, I, I, I actually don't want to know where we would be without your love and support. So I just want to say thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart uh, for your faithfulness in being partners in the gospel with us. Could you just give yourselves just a, a, a round of applause just for, because I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for you. Brothers and sisters, I want to, to do what the Lord has sent us to do here today, and that is to preach his word. I'm going to ask if you would stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. We will be in Psalms chapter 34 this morning, Psalms 34, 1 through 10. Psalms 34, 1 through 10, and the Word of God reads, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul make its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Can we say amen to God's word? Heavenly Father, we are here today not because we deserve to be, not because we put it on our calendar, not because the alarm woke us up this morning, but we are here because you said so, and we are honored to be here today. God, we ask that you just begin to work in our hearts and in our minds so, so that we can receive what it is that you have for us on today. God, I just pray that you will begin to eliminate distractions. Let us not be concerned with what we left or, or to be wrapped up in what's to come when we leave here today, but allow us to focus in on what you have. Jesus, 
I want much to be made of you in this moment. God, if there is anything that is in me that is not like you, I pray that you destroy it. Jesus, it is your cross that I am running behind because, again, I want much made of you. God, we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you a, a question this morning. When was the last time someone did something good for you? Just take a second thinking about it. When was the last time someone did something good for you? I want you to think about how, how did it make you feel? I also want you to think about how did you respond? What did you, what did you say when someone did something good for you? Did, you? did you tell anyone about that good that happened to you? Was there a change in your behavior based on the good that was done for you? See, I don't know about you, but when someone does something good for me or when someone does something good for us, it should invoke a response. And I believe that that response will, it'll be played out in one of two ways. One, that response will be verbal. We will express our gratitudes with words to the person who did the good. And depending on how good the good was, we, we, might, we might tell someone about that. And if that someone we tell is, is truly a friend of ours, they will possibly even celebrate along with us the good that has been done to us. So one response may be verbal. The, the other response from the good that is done to us, it could, be, it could be physical. See, depending on the one who did the good, we might, we might shake their hands or, or we might give them a, a fist bump or, or we might hug them or, or maybe even kiss them. Because the level in which we respond to the good, it depends on our relationship to the one uh, that did the good. And let's be honest, it also depends on how good the good is. Can I get amen? Husbands, we know we bought something for our wives that we thought was amazing and she didn't. We thought we was, man, when she sees this, Boy, I'm going to get a kiss, I'm going to get a hug, you know. And, and then the wife looks at that like, oh, okay. I don't know about you, but my wife, if it ain't funny, she's not laughing. If something smells, you'll know it. And so the good, it depends on our relationship to the one doing the good, and it depends on how good the good is. See, Psalms 34 is a response. It is a response from David. He is responding to what God has done for him. David's response to God is based off who he is, what he's done, and his response, it is one of worship. And you see, worship, it is the, it's the odd response to the saving acts of a praiseworthy God and, and his character. Now, what type of good must God have done for a man who has killed thousands of people to respond in this way? I'm glad you asked that question. See, from 1 Samuel 19 through 1 Samuel, uh, the 22nd chapter, David goes through a lot, and that's to put it mildly. In 1 Samuel chapter 19, Saul the king tried to kill David. And in Psalms chapter 20, Jonathan, who is Saul's sons and, and David's best friend, warns David about his father's evil intentions. And as a result of that warning, David flees the kingdom. He finds himself on the run and, and he is hiding, hoping to be safe and to escape the murderous plans of a, of a crazy king then something happens. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 through 15. We might have this up for you. I'm going to be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. This is, this is what happens. 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 through 15. David fled that day from Saul's presence and went to King Achish of Gath. But, but Achish's servant said to him, Isn't this David the king of the land? 
Don't they sing about him doing their dances? Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. David took this to heart and became very afraid of King Achish of Gath. So he pretended to be insane in his presence. David, he acted like a madman around them, scribbling on the doors of the city gates and, and letting saliva run down his beard. Look, can't you see that this man is crazy? Achish said to his servants, why did you bring him to me? Do I have such a shortage of crazy people that you brought this one to act crazy around me? Is this the one that is going to come into my house? 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 through 2. So David, last, so David left Gath, and he took refuge in the cave of Adullamon. When David's brothers and fathers and whole family heard, they went down and joined him there. In addition, every man who was desperate and dead or discontented rallied around him and became their leader. About 400 men were with him. I don't know if you guys caught that, but David escaped death by playing crazy. I don't know about you, but that, that blew me away, especially the part about him drooling down his beard. I can, I can relate to that sometimes. <laughs> it, it catches everything. It's a catch-all. But, but David escapes death by, by playing crazy. And so here in Psalms 34, David responds to what God did by worshiping the one, the true, and living God. Here's the big idea for today's sermon. I want you to take this home with you. Brothers and sisters, we must be people who worship God with our mouths and with our lives. We must be people who worship God with our mouths and with our lives. See, in Psalms 34, we see David praise and worship God with the fruit of his lips. And we see David praise and worship God with his life. We got any people who was born and raised in the church? Anybody? Anybody feel like been in church their whole life, literally? I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm a, uh, y'all pray for me because I'm an I'm a army brat and I'm a preacher's kid. I knew some of y'all would get it. I heard some groans. Somebody said, oh, I'm here by God's grace. Amen. I, 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 I grew up in, in a church that we had service on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and sometimes two and three times on Sunday. But as a kid, one of my favorite times would be on Friday night. See, I don't know about y'all, but we, we used to have testimony service. Anybody ever, anybody been a part of testimony service? And so, so it, was, it was a time when we would, we would gather, and, and during that time, people would, would randomly pop up out of their seats simply to share about what the Lord has done for them. For some of them, it would be a, a recent event, and for others, it would, may have been a hard week that week. Y'all do know that, that Christians have hard weeks, Right? I do know that, right? If, if you're in here today and you are not a believer, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, we, we want the Lord to, to save you. We, we want you to be free from sin and shame and, and the penalty of death. But uh, following Jesus doesn't mean everything is going to be great all the time. And so some would find themselves limping into to testimony service. And their testimony would be, would be what? The Lord maybe had, had done years before, or they would simply just celebrate the character of God and, and his overall goodness. They would thank Jesus for saving them. In testimony, some of them wouldn't even really have words, so they would just pop up and they would just sing a song. Sometimes the testimony that would be heard from their brothers and sisters, it would be so inspiring that people would begin to worship Jesus as if the testimony was that of their own. Brothers and sisters, David experienced the saving power of God. He experienced the saving power of God, and guess what? He had to say something. David was so moved by what God did in his life that this man who had killed tens of thousands of people wrote a song. Brothers and sisters, what we will see from 
the rest of the passage is a man who was inspired, who was encouraged, who was excited about the one who saved him. Look at verses 1 through 3 with me in Psalms 34. The first exhortation that we see here in verses 1 through 3 is that David encourages us to open our mouths and praise God. Listen to the text. Y'all going to help me preach this morning? I need y'all to help me preach this morning. Look at the text. Let's look at the text. Verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord when? Sometimes? On Monday? Only on Sunday? David says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let who? Us exalt his name together. David says that I will open my mouth and I will praise God in all seasons, in the good, in the bad, in the seasons where I have a lot, in the seasons where I seem to only have in lack. He says, I will offer a song of praise to my God as an act of worship. He says, my soul will boast in the Lord. And and like what happened in those testimony services, when other believers who hear the the heart of David hope that they would be humbled by what God had done, that they would celebrate the Lord with me as if he had done that very same thing to you. Verse 3 again, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We are all on the same team. The word us and together means that we who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are one. And we have an opportunity in front of a world that is dying, a world that is lost, a world that is frustrated, a world that is confused for them to be able to look at the church, the bride of Christ, the one who was set forth from the beginning of time to make the manifold wisdom of God known to the world. They get to see us exalting and worshiping a good God. How? Together. Dr. Tony Evans says it in this way. He says, don't make me praise God by myself. Let's together make him appear as big as he truly is. Let me tell y'all what that brother who led I am this morning, that brother can sing. Y'all heard me. I used the A. I said sing. That brother sang. All y'all was singing. But, but guess what? As, as great as his voice is that, that God has given us, as great as this worship band and team. and or, y'all, Hey, y'all, y'all have an orchestra. Amen? See, I just want y'all to know how awesome what y'all have is. So I think y'all maybe got used to it. I ain't used to this. So I want y'all to know this is amazing. But as good as they are, as gifted as they are, as as well-equipped as you are, we should not need them. We shouldn't need anyone to tell us to stand up or to clap our hands. We should be so moved by what God has done in our lives. We should be so moved by what God has done in the lives of our brothers and sisters that we should run into the house of worship ready to give God all that we have because he's been so good. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David encourages us to open our mouths and to praise God. That's right, amen, my brother. Next, David encouraged us to pursue God. Look at verses four through seven. He says, I I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from just a few of my fears. Oh, y'all reading with me, amen. From all of my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of a few of his troubles. Come on, church, y'all preaching in here this morning. Verse 7, the the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. 
he delivers them. These verses are, they're beautiful. Remember, David is reflecting on how God delivered him. In his writing of this song, he he shows us the beauty of a life in pursuit of God. Remember, we must not only worship God with our mouths, but we must do so with our lives. See, as a kid, testimony service, it was very exciting because you knew somebody was going to do something crazy. Somebody was going to just do something, and we would just be like, yo, you see that? But it was also exciting as a kid because we knew somebody was going to get up there and lie. We knew it. So at Purpose Church, we've been preaching a series through the book of James, and we've been talking about hypocrisy. Jesus often talked about hypocrites. We don't do so that much in the church today. Jesus pointed out to his disciples, yo, you see these people that know all of this stuff about the word, but they're not not living it. And so as a kid, we would would see that sister so-and-so would get up and, and have these extravagant testimonies, and we'd be like, nah, that ain't happened. Kids are experts at calling out hypocrites. If you don't believe me, promise your kid McDonald's today after church and don't take them and see what happens. (laughs) Brothers and sisters, it is vital that we, again, we praise God with our mouths, but we do so with our lives. David is encouraging us here in these three verses that we need to pursue God. It's vital that we pursue God. You know why it's vital that we pursue God? Because whatever we pursue, we begin to take on the characteristics of that or who we pursue. You don't believe me? You ever seen somebody who's a lawyer and you say, man, they look like a lawyer? I saw a little kid yesterday. I, I didn't, I've never seen him play baseball a day in my life, but he looked like a baseball player. He had the little walk. I think he had some sunflower seeds in his back pocket. He was, <laughs> he, was, he, per, he, per, he was pursuing to be a baseball player. So that pursuit means he was watching baseball games. He probably was going to baseball games. He was probably paying a lot of attention to those who were excelling in the baseball games. The same thing with a, a basketball player. I believe it's the same thing with a, with a Razorback fan. I heard y'all won yesterday. I heard y'all, I heard y'all beat Texas A&M, and you hadn't beat them in 10 years. That was exciting, wasn't it? Y'all ain't beat. They've been whooping y'all for 10 years, and y'all got them <laughs> yesterday. I shouldn't have said that. It's a long way to my car from here. I know y'all are. <laughs> How dare he do that? But what you pursue, you begin to take on the characteristics of what you are pursuing and who you are pursuing. Think about your kids. As they they pursue you, they begin to take on your characteristics. Sometimes I do stuff that my dad never taught me and I get angry. Why am I crossing my leg like this? I I wanted to be in relationship with my father, and so I was always looking towards him. I was always chasing after him, and I began to take on characteristics that were his. Brothers and sisters, this entire song and these few verses, they show us the beauty of a life in pursuit of God. It, It shows us a beautiful relationship between God, our Father, And us, his children. Look what happens when you pursue him. He says, those who look to him are radiant. And their faces shall never be ashamed. I need to pause here just for a moment. Listen. You are not who you used to be before Christ. I don't care what your mother said you would be. I don't care what your dad said you would be. That crazy aunt, that crazy uncle, that school teacher who said you would never amount to nothing. You are not who they said you would be. You are who God says that you are. 
My Bible tells me that who the Son sets free is free indeed. So, brothers and sisters, if you are living a life in pursuit of God, those that look to Him, their faces are radiant and they will never be ashamed. David says, I sought the Lord and He and He answered me and He delivered me from all of my fears. David and encourages us to to open our mouths and praise God. David encourages us to pursue God for us, not to be people who only talk about him, but people who also do what he tells us to do. We are people who are in pursuit of our perfect Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And David also encourages us to put our trust in God. Let's look at the last few verses here of this text. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? I think there's an exclamation point after that. Let's try that again. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Come on in here, church. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Verses 9 through 10. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. I get so convicted when I read uh, Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who takes refuge in him. I get so convicted about talking to people about Jesus when I see this text. Now, I just want to test and see how far south I am. Do, do, do y'all eat stuffing here or dressing? Now, I say dressing. I don't put the G at the end. I just, I just I want y'all to know as we get in country with it. Y'all eat dressing, right? Cornbread dressing, right? Not, not jiffy dressing. Like you don't make cornbread with, with jiffy, right? You, you make some real cornbread, right? And so my wife makes amazing, amazing cornbread dressing. My most favorite time of the year, Thanksgiving is coming up because I get all the food at Christmas. I don't have to buy nobody nothing. Praise God for Thanksgiving. And so one day, I was in the barbershop. I was there with my kids. Y'all going to be like, he lying. He don't go to the barbershop. I was there with my, with my boys. They all still have their hair. Uh, we was at the barbershop, and it was close to Thanksgiving. And, you know, we always, everybody talks about what we eat. Y'all, we all eat the same thing. Everybody posts pictures on Facebook. Listen, we eating that too. We, we got it. But we're in the barbershop, and we're talking about, talking about my wife's dressing. And so I'm, I'm talking about it. I'm, I'm going in about it. And, and something really weird started happening. All the guys in the barbershops, they, they started leaning in. Some of them, they were starting to drool like David was. It was getting caught up in their beard. They was, they was leaning in. And they, was, they, were like, they were like salivating. And they were like, man, can we come over to your house? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, I was able to talk about that dressing in such of a way that others who had never tasted my wife's dressing wanted what I had tasted. I began to think about what if I talked about Jesus? What if, I, what, if I, what if I shared Jesus with others the way I shared my wife's cornbread dressing? Would they, begin to, would they begin to wonder? Would they begin to desire to know the same Jesus that I had experienced? Brothers and sisters, why don't we talk about Jesus the way I talk about my wife's dressing. I'm going to challenge you. It's one of two reasons. Either we've forgotten how good the Lord tastes, or we've never really tasted him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If, if, there's, if there's not an excitement, if there's not a fervor, to tell others with 
about him in a way that encourages them to get to know because not that we just simply have all the right things to say about Jesus, but there's something in our life. There is something in our approach. There is something in uh, the way that we say it and do it that shows them that, man, they really believe that this God is good. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare our hearts to close today, I want to ask you a question. When's the last time you praised God verbally? I'm not simply talking about worship, that is one way as we sing songs, but when's the last time that you've praised God verbally? When was the last time you sat and reflected on who God is and what he has done for you and what he has done for all mankind? When's the last time? Brothers and sisters, I'll tell you this. One of the things that get in the way of, of us not praising God like we should and how he deserves is that we're in such a hurry. Our lives are so busy that we are quickly moving on to the next thing, to the next fad. And, and what happens even in our lives that are supposed to be in, in awe of who Jesus is we rush on to the next thing we need him to do in our lives without stopping for a moment and thanking him for what he's already done. Hey, y'all, I'm getting older. I'm getting older. I laugh at the fact that the Lord gave us a one-year-old at the age that we are. But one of the things that's, that's happened as I've gotten older, man, these old hymns be popping up in my heart. I didn't even know I knew some of these songs. And, 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 and the sayings from the, from the old saints that I affectionately called them, they, they begin to, to pop into my heart. And I just find myself, I'm like, man, I'm turning into the old preacher. But one of the things that the old saints used to say, the old church mother would get up, or the old deacon would get up, and he would say something kind of like this. He said, when I, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. Sometimes you got to make it personal. All that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. And why is that? I thank God for saving me. Is there anybody in here today that could just muster up a little bit? Do you, do you feel me just a little bit this morning? Is there anybody in here today who is thankful that God saved them? Brothers and sisters, as I prepare to take my seat on today, I want you to experience the joy of the Lord. I long for you to feel free to worship Jesus without caring what someone will say. I long for you to love Jesus more than you love your preferences. I long for you to be in awe of what Jesus has done so much that you can't help but to tell others of his faithfulness with the zeal that make others long for the Jesus that you speak of. Brothers and sisters, we have we've come today. We've heard the word of the Lord and I just want to ask you, what is the Holy Spirit calling you to do in this moment?